Hi everyone, this is a tutorial from twbiconcepts.com. In this tutorial today, we will learn about query transform. Query transform is the most widely used transform in data services. This is a part of the platform transform. So in this tutorial, we will see what are the working options available in query transform. So let us go to the data services designer. Here is my data flow workspace. Let us introduce a source table. Let's say the employee table and bring a query transform. Join the query transform with the source table. Now let us double click and get inside the query transform to check what are the options available. So this is my input schema. This is my output schema. And these are the various options tabs available in the query transform. So let us first try to map a one to one column to the output schema. So drag and drop it to the output schema. Select the column, drag and drop it to the output schema. Alternatively, we can copy and paste, say insert below the employee name column. So this is how we can do another way. Select the column and right click, say map to output. So these are the way we can map the column. So now if we see, click on the employee number column, so it will point, it, the mapping is pointing to the employee number column of the input EMP schema. Similarly, all the columns have been mapped accordingly. So if we want to delete some columns, we can do a delete. We can even change the order of the output schema. We can cut, suppose we want the commission to be placed above the salary. So cut and paste and select insert above. So in this way we can change the ordering of the columns of the output schema. Also, suppose we want the employee number as a part of the primary key. So we right click and select primary key. The primary key symbol comes here. Now let us define a new output column. Right click and select new output column. Insert below the salary column. Let's name it total salary. Let's make the data type as decimal 7 precision and scale 2. Okay. Now this column is not mapped. This symbol signifies that this column is unmapped. Similarly, this column also signifies that this input column has not been mapped with any of the output column. So now let us define that total salary mapping of this column as a summation of salary and commission. So what we can do, drag the salary. First of all, select the total salary. Now we have to define the mapping over here. Drag the salary to the lower pane followed by a summation sign and what alternatively we can do type the schema name and now you can find that the all the columns of the input schema are there so let's select it and validate this is how we can also define the mapping now check that the, the symbol is a bit different from that of the other output column this means that this is a complex mapping and these are simple one-to-one -one mapping. Now let us see what do we mean by a new function call. Suppose we want to do a new function call insert below. So these are the functions available in data services. Suppose we want to do a lookup. Lookup underscore ext function. Let's select the department table as our lookup table. Now here is our lookup table. Let's make the department number column as the input column and let's validate it with the input schema employee number employee dot department number and as a result of the output we want the department name from the department table and click finish. So now if you check you will find that the department name is an output column as a result of the function call. So if we want to call any other database functions, we can similarly do like this. So let us introduce, let us first delete this one, delete, and let us introduce a database function. I have similar functionality in place. Let us import by name, get department name. This is one of my database procedure or function. Let's import it. Now if we select new function call, 
here you will find that the procedure or the function the database function is already in place next and we pass the argument as the department number of the input employee schema and click next and we want the department name as a return from this function call so this is how we can call a new function so let's spell it as okay. now if we want this output schema the column names and the data type as a part of a file so we can generate fi fi flat file format over here so this will give the column name and the corresponding data type so if you want to make this file format as a uh, target so we can easily define it from the any query transform apart from that we can generate dtt and xml schema now let us check what are the options available in the below tabs so over here in the select tab you have the distinct options so selecting this means it will eliminate the duplicate records from the source and will only pass the distinct values available in the input emp table now in the from tab signifies the input schema over here we have only one input table or the input schema is our emp let us go to the where clause over here we can define the filter condition so we can drag and drop or we can type it emp.dptno let's say equal to 10 let's validate so over here in the filter clause also we can use parameters we can use data flow level parameter or global variable in the filter condition so let's go to the next step that is the group by so let us delete for the timing what we have done select and delete so suppose we want the uh, sum of the salary group by department number so what we will do we will take the department number as our output and define this mapping as sum sum of salary group by so select the column drag and drop it over here so the query will turn as select department number and sum of salary from employee table group by department number now let's explore the next step that is the order by over here this does the ordering of the input column so if we want to generate the output as a sorted order of say department number so we can drag and drop the column and select the sort order whether ascending or descending apart from that we can introduce any other column also it is possible so if we want the employee number ascending to be first in the sorted order so we can select the arrow buttons to make the ordering as we want let's delete it for the time being let's next go to the next step that is the advanced step this tab is mainly used for uh, performance optimization so, so when we select the distinct in the select box and in the advanced category when we select the distinct run distinct as a separate process this means that data services generates the individual or a special dedicated thread to handle this operation uh, uh, for performance optimization Similarly, for group by, join, order, this time consuming heavy process, data services initiates a separate thread to handle this operation. So, this is mainly useful from the performance optimization point of view. Now, let's go to the from tab. This is important because over here we will do all the joining and we can define the join order, the order in which we want the tables to be joined, tables or files or Microsoft excel file or xml all the file formats tables applications uh, sources whatever be the source 
the way we define the join is in the joining pairs over here. So let us first introduce our next uh, table. Suppose the department table and make it a source and join it with the query transform. Let's go back to the query transform and now in the from tab you will find that there are two input schemas the employee and the department. So suppose you select the employee name and the department name map group. Now we will define the join condition in this pane. So I select the employee table as my left table inner join with the department table. Now we need to specify the join condition right click just click on the smart editor the smart editor will open up and we can define the join condition over here employee.department number is equal to the department.department .department number so this is how we can define the join condition so i delete this one what we have just view let us validate once more yes the query transform is validated successfully now we can left outer join all the possible joins available we can perform it over here inner join left outer join and if we want the right outer join just change the department table to this side and the employee table to over to this side so first if I select EMP, select the left outer join with the department table. Now if we want I want employee right outer join, then what I will do, I will remove the join and select the department table as my left table, then select the left outer join and select the employee table. This is how we do. Now suppose we have three tables left outer join now let's see how it looks like in data services let's introduce one more table and we map it to the query transform so in the from schema now i have three input schemas these are my input schemas emp department number and salary suppose just to show how it looks like suppose takes the employee table as my first left table left outer join with the department table next i want the resultant set to be left outer join so i select over here left outer join with the cell grade table this is how the we define our joining so here you have to define the join condition Similarly, over here you also have to define the join condition. This is just to show how the joining looks like, how we can do left outer join of three tables. Now, apart from that, if you observe over here, you will find two properties the join rank and the cache. So, join ranks and cache, these two properties are used uh, for the purpose of join ordering. Suppose we want the employee table to be joined first with the department table followed by the cell grade table. So if we define the join condition, join rank as 40, 30, say 10. So based on the higher join rank, it joins the table. So employee now table will first be joined with the department table because this is a, having a higher rank than that of the cell grade table if we define a inner join. And if data services handles this join, apart from that, we will obviously go for cache for small tables. This gives you higher performance boost. So just work around, play around with the query transform. You can get an idea how it works. Apart from that, we will cover the unnesting, nesting and make current when we will deal with the XML file formats. This is for the day. Hope you like the tutorial. To get more tutorials on data services, please visit dwbiconcepts.com. Thank you.